welcome to another episode of Gadgets and Gizmos. My name is Gaurav Upreti. Now, when I left my house this morning, I thought I looked good, man. Well groomed. You can say like Krithik Roshan, of course, minus the hair. But then I decided to use the public transport. And now I feel I look like Natha. But don't you worry, the show looks fantastic and this is what we have lined up. A couple of weeks back, Xiaomi launched their flagship device called the Note 3. A phone that costs only 10,000 rupees and offers some great feature. Definitely a value for money device. And now they're back with another flagship device. It's called the Mi 5 and it looks pretty impressive. Take a look. After owning the segment again with the Note 3, Xiaomi it seems is in no mood to settle just yet. After announcing the Mi 5 at the MWC, the company has finally launched their latest flagship device Mi 5 in India at an attractive price of 24,999 rupees. Now, Xiaomi is also celebrating their fourth year anniversary. Mi 1 was the first smartphone they launched in the year 2011. Mi 3 was the first phone launched in India and it was an instant hit. Since then, Xiaomi has launched plenty of phones, tablet, a fitness band, power banks and hopefully the television would be coming in soon. But the Mi 5, the company really hopes it doesn't meet the same fate as that of the Mi 4. Mi 4 which dropped from a launch price of over 20,000 rupees to less than 15. The Mi 5 has been in the making for 19 months and has a lot of new things to offer. You see a refreshed design here with a nice combination of glass and metal. It's curved now. The Mi 5 has a 5.15 inch ultra thin full HD display with 1920 by 1080 pixel of resolution and Xiaomi's proprietary sunlight display technology. The company didn't go for the QHD display in order to save on battery and for better frame rates, which makes sense. The phone is powered by 1.2 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 processor along with 3 GB of RAM and 32 GB of internal memory, which is non-expandable. The Mi 5 is a dual SIM phone that supports 4G LTE. On the camera front, the Mi 5 sports a 16 MP camera on the rear with 4 axis optical image stabilization. There's face detection, autofocus and LED flash as well. It comes with DTI pixel to pixel isolation technology and can do 4K videos as well. There's also 4 MP camera on the front with 36 smart beauty profiles. Now Mi 5 runs Android 6.0 Marshmallow based on Mi UI 7 out of the box. It's neat and clutter free. The phone is backed by 3000 mAh battery and supports Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3.0 technology. The phone also comes with USB Type-C connectivity port and an IR blaster. So overall on first impression the Mi 5 looks promising. However, we will save our final verdict after a full review, which is next week. Samsung, of course, is back in the game with the launch of their latest smartphone, their flagship phone, the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge. It's a good-looking phone and it's a powerhouse great performance we must say now of course the iPhone 6s is still around so which one should you go for let's find out last week I reviewed the Galaxy S7 Edge this phone and according to me it was the best Android smartphone in the world but unfortunately this has left me with a midlife crisis of sorts because a couple of months ago, I reviewed the iPhone 6s, which I felt was too pretty darn good. So, I've put my mind to it, I've thought a lot, and finally, I figured out which one is better. But unfortunately, there's this guy out here who kind of disagrees with me. Seriously? Game on, buddy. You know, iPhones have always had such elegant designs. They've always looked kind of timeless. And the iPhone 6s is possibly the most gorgeous smartphone you can buy. And it is super sturdy because of its series 7000 aluminium. Last year, you gave the Galaxy S6 two thumbs ups because it was a leader in design. And this year, they have further refined the design with the S7 and made it more nicer. You get a micro SD card slot. It supports a 200 GB memory card. And it also is IP68 certified, which basically means it is water resistant. And I can play holy with this phone, which is going to come in super handy this week. 
What will you do with your iPhone? That's how I'm going to use it. <laughs>
and the TFT screen serves just as a display for the interface as this device does not support any video formats. The power and volume buttons are positioned on the left and the micro SD slot is on the right. But before we start talking to you about product performance and sound quality, there is one catch. Now the X1 does not offer any internal storage. That means you will need a micro SD card right from the outset to get cracking. And you'll also need a set of headphones because the X1 does not offer those either. So with no internal storage and your music being sourced from an SD card, I'm a bit iffy about how that's going to affect the sound quality. So let's dive into that right away. The X1 supports lossless and high resolution formats including FLAC files which weigh approximately 30 MB per song. The X1 also supports other formats such as WAV, WMA, MP3s and MP2s to name just a few which really give the X1 an edge as far as sound quality is concerned. It also supports micro SD cards up to 128 GB which can pretty much hold all your music. Given its compatibility with high-res FLAC files, the X1, despite no internal storage, does not disappoint in terms of sound quality and volume range. But there are some major downsides to the product as well. Fio claims a battery life and playback time of 12 hours for the X1 on a full charge, but leaving the device on audio loop after charging, we found it dying after 10 hours. For a device which does not play videos, we were expecting more from the battery. As for the user interface, it can surely use some refinement as it only offers a display for your music which is more reflective than it is visible. The navigation wheel at the center of the device is not touch sensitive and rather rough to say the least and the micro SD slot does not have a cover leaving the device highly at risk. All in all, with a cost of 9000 rupees, this device would have surely made a mark had it been manufactured 8 years ago. But in today's day when most smartphones offer 128 GB of storage and are compatible with a variety of audio formats, maybe the X1 was a bit too late to enter the market. Welcome back, you're still watching Gadgets and Gizmos. My name is Gaurav Preeti and uh, it is time for our gaming segment now. For many, Street Fighter is the epitome of fighting games. Its relentless pursuit of deep game mechanics combined with memorable character and art designs has enthralled gamers worldwide. So it's little surprise then that there is a Street Fighter V. What is surprising though is the state that it's been launched in. Coming to the graphics of the game, this is the best that any Street Fighter game has looked in our opinion. Capcom decided to move over to the Unreal Engine 4 for this iteration and the results are glorious. Characters have detailed animations and character models along with tons of little quirks that make them unique. The backgrounds themselves, as with any Street Fighter game, are really dynamic too, featuring great animations. Similarly, sound also has great attention to detail with great combat sounds and music. The fighting itself feels the most streamlined of any Street Fighter game to date. It's also a lot more forgiving, relying less on complex, timing-based combos than previous iterations. The game also introduces a new V-meter, which builds up over the round and allows you to pull V-specific moves or augment the power of your existing moves and combos. The fights feel fast and tight, resulting in a cat and mouse gameplay system that is extremely fun. The game also runs extremely well with a solid frame rate throughout.
What isn't so great, however, is the bare bones package that Street Fighter V is at the moment. As of the time of this review, we still weren't able to get a stable multiplayer game running. Of the times we did manage to, we had great fun. But most of our time was spent staring at the connection screen. And that isn't fun. There's also no arcade mode here, which is a huge mama, which essentially means that there's no way to play this game against a CPU opponent. The story mode also is a joke to be frank and can be beaten by average players within an hour or two. The training mode teaches you almost nothing and the shop and challenge modes are slotted to come as a free update in March. Quick attacks that can link into each other for a small amount of damage. Both of these normals are very good up close. The character roster is also really slim at launch, with just 16 fighters. New fighters will be coming out soon as either paid DLC or for free. A detailed story mode will also be coming out in June. In short, most of this should have been here at launch. While the fighting itself is fun and far more accessible than it's ever been, Street Fighter V feels like a beta rather than a full game at the moment. With a list price of 2000 rupees, we would recommend that you wait till more features are added before adding this game to your collection. So we have updated our top 5 list and this week we tell you top 5 budget smartphone under 15,000 rupees. So in case you were planning on buying a smartphone for yourself and were confused, well not anymore. The budget smartphone segment is a very important segment in the Indian market. There are some really good flagship smartphones here that deliver great performance and the competition is really tough. So here is our list of top 5 budget smartphones under 15,000 rupees in India. At number 5 we have the Asus Zenfone 2. The phone offers a rock solid performance at a very affordable price of just 13,999 rupees. It uses a 1.83 GHz quad core variant of the Intel Atom SoC instead of the 2.3 GHz variant which is being used in the higher models such as the Deluxe model. Now, this model has a 2 GB of RAM and 16 GB of storage. It still offers some good specification and a smooth lag free performance. You'll also be pleased with the gaming experience. Moreover Asus has equipped the phone with a good display and a decent camera as well. Number 4 we have the Lenovo Vibe K4 Note which is a successor to the K3 Note. The design of course is inspired from Motorola phones, uh, they can do that now. The performance is handled by an octa-core MediaTek MT6 and 53 SoC which is able to handle almost all tasks with ease. The performance is further enhanced by a 3 GB of RAM which is able to provide better multitasking experience. The phone has a 32 GB internal storage which can be expanded and there is 13 MP camera at the rear and the phone does feature a fingerprint sensor at the back. At number 3 we have Xiaomi Mi 4i. It is still one of the best looking phones in this price segment regardless of its plastic body. The phone sports a beautiful 5 inch 1080p display which is still the best display on a phone under a budget of 15,000 rupees. It's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 615 SoC, the Mi 4i is able to churn out a decent performance. The camera quality is great and so is the battery life. At number 2, we have the new kit on the block, the Le Echo 1S. The phone delivers some great performance with its MediaTek Helio X20 SoC. The Le 1S is easily one of the most powerful phones currently available for a budget of 15,000 rupees. There's 3 GB of RAM and ample storage of 32 GB. The phone is further complemented by its clean candy bar design and metal uni body. The 5.5 inch FHD display is good and the rare 13 MP shooter takes fairly decent images. The only thing the phone lacks is a good battery life which is not at par. And at number 1 we have the Xiaomi Redmi Note 3. One of the most talked about companies in the Indian smartphone scene. It took its time and came up with a very good phone, the Redmi Note 3. 
The phone trumps everything when it comes to performance in phones which cost at least 30,000 rupees. The battery is more than commendable at 4,000 mAh and offering at least 12 hours of usage on a single charge. The 16 MP rear camera might not be the best, but it takes good pictures nevertheless. And the price of 11,999 makes it a really sweet deal. Alright, time to see what's making news in the world of technology in our tech news segment. Google removes Gmail mic drop April Fool's joke after ruining lives. The search engine giant known for inserting jokes and hoaxes into its product ceremoniously on every April Fool's Day was caught on the wrong foot on Friday when an ill-conceived joke backfired ruining many lives. The prank? A mic drop option added to Gmail that automatically fixed the GIF of a minion tossing away a microphone when you hit send. The problem? It led to more headaches than laughs. Micromax to open its own online store by Diwali. Micromax is in process of developing its own online store from where it will sell phones and other devices. The company executives, while unveiling the Canvas Park 3, hinted that the store could go live before Diwali. However, the company admitted that the whole idea of exclusive online store for Micromax product was in the early stage of planning. This could be to better compete with Xiaomi, which has started selling products on its Mi stores. Shares of Tesla Motors surged to their highest in six months early on Friday after the electric car maker sent orders for its new Model 3 sedan. Its first car aimed at mass market had sped past 130,000 in the first 24 hours. Analysts questioned whether and how soon Tesla would be able to meet intense demand for the stylish compact sedan priced from $35,000. The Model 3 considered a make or break product for Tesla was unveiled late on Thursday by Chief Executive Elon Musk. And Xiaomi introduces Mi Ecosystem with a new smart rice cooker. Xiaomi has launched a new sub-brand called Mi Ecosystem for its IoT products. Under the Mi Ecosystem, Xiaomi has introduced a Wi-Fi enabled smart cooker that lets you control the way the rice is cooked using a smartphone app. The Mi induction heating pressure cooker is based on induction heating technology. It will be available on sale in China during the Mi Fan Festival on April 6. However, there is no word on the availability of the cooker outside China. Alright, that's all we have for you in this week's episode. We hope you enjoyed watching it. And if you have any questions and queries, you can always write into us. You can follow us on Twitter and you can always like our Facebook page. So until we meet next, take care.